What's up guys? So this is my first kind of real basic code tutorial. If you were like me one year ago, I didn't know anything about code. So I figured I would start from that same point. If you think code is kind of intimidating or uh, it might look like the matrix in your mind with the ones and zeros falling down the screen, but that's not how it is, at least with what we're gonna do today. So what we're gonna do today is just make a simple little page with a puppy and some words and some headers and uh, a list of a few things and you can just follow along. So the first thing that we need is an editor. We don't actually need an editor, but an editor just kind of auto-completes your words for you for code. And uh, you could do it in Notepad if you wanted to. So uh, for this, I'm gonna use Atom. If you just go to Google and you type in Atom or go to atom.io and you download it and then you install it, you open it up, it'll look like this. I have a folder where I'm going to be putting what we're doing today. It's called tutorials. This is where I'll be keeping the files that we make. And if you once you have it downloaded, installed, and you open it up, you're going to want to go to file, settings, and then go to install. These are like kind of mods you can get for Atom. It's really modular and you want to gonna you're, you're gonna want to type Emmet in there e-m-m-e-t Emmet and search that and Emmet the essential tool for web developers I already have it installed but for you it will show this blue button that says install once you install that go to file new file press control s for save as and we're going to name this starter kit HTML since that's what this whole video is it's gonna be a starter kit okay so click Save you now have an HTML file so the first thing we're gonna do is exclamation point and then we're gonna hit tab it's gonna pop up with all of this here you don't have to know what all this means and this combo thing here is from one of the add-ons that I have and I think it came from an update, don't worry about that. So you're going to get this doc type, HTML, HTML language, head, blah blah blah. So we have a lang here which just tells the browser that you're going to be doing it in English, you could change this to Spanish or any anything like that there's a whole lot that they could just auto complete EU you know anything you want but we're doing it in English so we'll keep it in English uh, this header section here this head and then it has a closing closing is when you just have a slash so it's like you open a container put stuff in it and then close the container so we have a header container. This tells it what kinds of characters to use. Uh, this kind of tells the browser everything it needs to know about how your page is going to be. You could actually delete all of this and it wouldn't change anything. We have a title. A title is here. When you when you have your when you have your browser open, that becomes your title. So uh, let's name this 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 uh, title for this HTML starter kit. Cool. Okay. So now we have a header, and that, that will be the little title bar on our tab. And so, if you go down here to the body, which is the main section of the page here, kind of like all the meat goes. Uh, you have these things called divs, D-I-V. So you type D-I-V and you press tab and it will make an opening one and a closing f one for you. And uh, divs are just containers, just a box that holds things. So if we have a div, we can also put a header. We don't need that type header out and it's different than that head that you see. So if we type header one, 
H1, it's the biggest header you can get by default in HTML. And you press tab and then you type. This is pretty big. And then if you want to make a small one, uh, the smallest one they have, I think is H4 or H5. So this is, this is smaller. Right, so you may be wondering, okay, so this is great. I'm typing code, but what does it actually look like on the page when I, when I make it? So you can see that in real time. If you just control S, make sure you save it. Had that little blue, every time you change something, uh, it will have this little blue dot up there. You press control S, it'll go away, and then you know that you saved it. So if you go to wherever you saved this file here, and open up a browser so we still have the atom page and then I have this file that we're working on and if I drag it onto it you can see what we just made simple but this is a web page and it will render if you put it on a website it will render just like this so you're thinking like okay this is this is pretty boring I want a picture okay in HTML a picture is kind of like, we, we refer to it as an IMG, okay? And if you press IMG and you press tab, it will autocomplete for you. And you wanna have, this This SRC means source. So where are you gonna get it from? So let's go here and let's Google a puppy. We like this puppy, this is a cute puppy. We go to the view, let's take this link and let's put it in the source. Cool, awesome, so we go back, reload the page, now we have a puppy on our page and it's coming from this, where you just linked it, and this is code, this is all things that you just made on the fly. Okay, so there are a lot of different tags in HTML that you can kind of, you can learn, okay, so another one would be the P tag, which is just, you know, just for letters or a sentence or something, a paragraph tag is what that is. And it has an open and a close, and you just need to open it, one without the slash, and then the same thing, but with the slash. And then we have uh, a span, which is, you know, for, for a P tag, you can type in sentences. A span is usually just one sentence. So that's, that's pretty neat too. And then, Let's say we want to have a, um, let's say we want a recipe, right? So uh, let's say cookies. Okay, that's cool. And, but we need a list. So uh, should we make an ordered or an unordered list? I guess it doesn't, you don't really need an ordered list for recipe for cookies. So let's just do an unordered list, which is UL. Cool, so that opens and closes an unordered list. So now we gotta put things in our list. So we need a list item, which is just li. Now we have one list item. We probably need some milk. And we probably need some flour. And we'll probably need some eggs. And that will make um, some sweet, chocolate chip cookies, right? So this is a recipe, you don't really need an ordered list. But let's say you do need an ordered list for the directions. So for an ordered list, it's just OL, ordered list. Then we need some list items in there. So let's say uh, preheat oven to 375. And then we want to uh, bake for 20 minutes. Those are the most bland tasting cookies in the history of cookies, we'll probably just for my sanity. And like uh, and some chocolate chips. Chocolate chips are good. Okay, chocolate chips. That's up to you. Bake for 20 minutes, preheat oven. And then we want to let them cool for 10 minutes before serving. Awesome. 
to me thinking, okay, what does this actually look like? Well, go to your page here. Refresh. Wow. Okay, so you'll see just one sentence and cookies on the same line and letters on a different line. So you're like, okay, why are these on the same line? Well, the browser reads it like this. It has, you know, they can go side by side. Now, if I were to change this to a P, paragraph tag, it, it wants its own line. P tags want their own line and they're gonna push everything that's not inside this down below it. It's like we have cookies. So I save this, I refresh it, and I have cookies on my own line. We probably need some uh, directions, right? So let's make some directions in between, you know, cookies, cool, and then we have some directions an order list for how to make these things. So, fresh again, we have cookies. What do we need? Milk, flour, eggs, sugar, chocolate chips, lots of question marks, that's up to you. Directions, preheat oven, bake for 20 minutes, let them cool 10 minutes before serving. So let's make this a little more coherent and co cohesive. So. Uh, Uh, guide to making the most bland cookies on earth. AKA my grandmother's recipe. And then we have a picture of a dog. That's not really related. Let's, we need to get chip cookies. That's what we need. Now I'm getting hungry. Can we get some chocolate chip cookies for dessert, please? Cool. So this alternative, this this ALT here means alternative source. So for some reason, let's say this web page goes down, it will go to the second source over here, or you can type in some text like, uh, oops. Looks like this didn't load. And so if I break this, some numbers here, so I know that won't work anymore, it will now show this instead. Oops, look like this didn't load. I can delete that. Refresh, bring it back. Cool. Letters, that doesn't really make sense. Let's get started. So this is pretty bland, super bland for what we're doing, but we just made a guide to making the most bland cookies on earth. And that's pretty great. And this is code. This is all code and we did this in 15, 10 minutes. This is a web page right here. It's not very styled, but you need another page that goes back and styles this. So you can set the color, and you wanna move this cookie to be across the entire page, or you want to change the font, or you want to change the color of the font, or you want an outline or a box around this, and that's called CSS, which is Cascading Style Sheets. And I will do that in the next kind of uh, starter kit. So we'll, we'll, we'll save this one, and then if you wanna style up the guide to making the most bland cookies on earth we'll do that in the next video and uh, i hope to see you there there are a lot more tags like this this was just the ones i just pulled off the top of my head the most common ones that you'll see and uh you can nest these you can have a div think of a div as just a container you can have another container inside of that and another container and another container and it's just deception so, I mean, it, things can get a little funky if you have stuff in here, and then you have some stuff in here, and, you know, they're all nested like that. But most of the time, you'll have one wrapper around the whole page, which is kind of what we have here. This is our wrapper div, our wrapping container, and then we have everything we want inside of that. And uh, I hope this was 
coherent enough to that if you didn't know code and you wanted to code a simple web page, just a simple recipe, link it to your grandma or your friend or whoever, they'd be like, they wouldn't really care about the styling because they're you're their friend or family and they're not going to criticize you for that, I hope. But regardless, you just made a recipe, a web page, in 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and this was your first time that you've ever done it. So hopefully this was helpful. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to me, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll answer it best I can. I've been doing this now for a year. I've had three jobs, doing it professionally, full time. Uh, I'm, we'll get to where, uh, if I can get these tutorials going far enough, we'll get to where I can teach you what I'm currently doing at work right now. And I'm just kind of doing, uh, starting from scratch. If you don't know anything, this is what you need to know, and this is just making a simple recipe. Okay, cool. So if you like it, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys. Bye.